are here today with Baru McCullough. Yeah. yeah. Baru McCullough. Yeah. <laughs> 25 years old and he is on his push bike rocking around the entire world. Yeah. Would that be accurate? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, pretty accurate. Yeah. Unbelievable. Uh, why are you doing this? Uh, I kind of, a, a friend mentioned something and well, we, we're talking about going away and doing something. I said, oh, I won't be able to get the leave off work. Um, and, then, and then he was like, oh, well, you can always take leave off work. And that just kind of like planted this little seed. Mm. And then I was thinking about it, thinking about it, thinking about it. Um, and, you know, like I've seen other people go away and do that sort of thing. And that always remained a pipe dream. Mm. But then I thought, like, why not? Like, jump in. I, I, was, I, was, I was scared that I'd get to... You know, get older and then look back and be like, which I, yeah, like, which I did that when I was when I was twenty three, which is how old I was when I left. Um, oh, really? So I just yeah jumped into it pretty quickly. And were you working at the time? Uh, yeah, yeah, I was I was head coach at the velodrome in or one of the velodromes in London. Yeah, how deal? So you're a you're a cycling superstar, is what you're saying already? No, I just 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 a one trick pony. <laughs> <laughs> I just go yeah. I just go around in circles really fast. Just a lot of cycling. <laughs> I love that. Where, where did you start? Yeah, where have you been, and what's what's been your favourite place so far? I ticked over forty thousand kilometres when I reached Uluru, um, up it, up in the centre. So it's taken me like close on two years to do that. Um, I've been through Europe, through the Balkans, uh, across India, across Southeast Asia, East Asia. Ended up in Japan in winter, and then eventually made my way to Perth. I think my favourite place within that would have definitely been Malaysia or Indonesia. Um, I mean, I, I plan to spend a week in Malaysia, one from the Thai border to no, no, Singapore, and then ended up being there for about four and a half months. So I think that speaks for itself. <laughs> so you, yeah, you didn't much, have much other. <laughs> And what what would you say is the most difficult part of doing this, or maybe the most difficult place, or I guess both? Yeah, I mean, it's definitely like your mentality affects how you perceive like the world around you uh for me i, I was feeling really lonely when i was right to japan because it was like you know deep bleak cold yeah deep, wet bleak winter yeah um like especially like up in Hokkaido, like proper like frontier country out there mm -hmm. like kind of like end of the world sort of like sort of feeling um but i, I saw my parents at christmas they came over to visit and then when they left it was like and I, I thought I'd gotten used to kind of dealing with like missing home. Mm. And then suddenly it was like really difficult again. Right. Like, you know, the days are short, temperatures freezing. It's midwinter, so everyone's got their like winter blues anyway. Yeah. So it's quite hard to kind of fight, fight a rhythm. So it's, yeah, the loneliness gets quite hard sometimes. And, and short days as well in your winter. So how, how long are your days of riding? I, it really changes. When I left, like going across Europe, I was really committed to uh, like smashing out like this many Ks a day, this many Ks a day. Now I tend to do it more by like hours in a day. Um, right. Because then you don't feel pressured to ride further and further to reach yeah. something if you're, if you're tired. Um, so how many hours would you ride in a day? If it was a really good day, like like eight hours in. <sighs> um, but no, like normally it's less than that just yeah. because things fall apart. But like especially here in Australia, like you ride, you're riding in the outback. You might only do half a day, but then you get to a road house and you have signal and you kind of have that, that connection to the world again. Yeah. So then I may as well just stay at that road house and use the signal overnight. Uh, I, I, I can't even comprehend. Uh, I, I own a motorhome and, and I like it. Is it J Vines? Uh, no, it's not. <laughs> and, and I like the concept of traveling yeah. around, but I have mod cons mm -hmm. and I've got a shower and a toilet and a kitchen and a bed and. You know, I can shut the door and I'm safe. Do you ever feel unsafe? No, nah, really. No? No, uh, I can't. Well, th yeah, there's definitely places where, like, you've got to be a bit street smart in some places. Mm -hmm. And, like, people will warn you and give you heads up about where to go, where not to go. Mm -hmm. And people warn you about, about what they're scared of. So you kind of have to take it with a bit of a grain of salt. Yeah, you know, Something that's all my agents fearful of is going to be different from someone who's <laughs> one of like the grey nomads over here and their traveling man. It's going to be quite different. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there are places where you've got to kind of you can't be naive about anything. You've got to keep your you know your wits about you. Exactly. Exactly. 
Um, and there are some things that I don't need to worry about and mm. as a guy do. It's like it wouldn't be the same. Yeah. Or the book might be different concerns and we uh, you had expectations going into this. Well, you probably didn't. You probably went to hell with it and throwing caution to the wind. I'm jumping on my bike and I'm going. What was your expectation about the journey? And and has any of that surprised you? And is reality different from your expectation? I mean, there were, there were hopes of things that I wished would happen. Mm. Um, like, like people of the world being kind to you yeah. and, and helping you out. Like you hear, like before I left, I would read like blogs, watch other people's videos about what they're doing. And like, there's all these like amazing interactions that they have. So I left kind of hoping that, you know, I'd have something, have something similar. And across Europe, I didn't really have that because I was just like going it every day, okay. you know, like trying to just race across the continent. Um, and then like I slowed down once I got to like Turkey and that then coincided with the first time that these people put me up. Like I was just like having some food at their restaurant and they're like, what are you sleeping tonight? And this is all through like Google Translate. Of course. <laughs> and I just said, oh, like probably like find a camp spot like somewhere. Yeah. No, I'm just <laughs> oh, no, no. Like you're, you're staying at ours. Um, so there's those kind of, that was the first time where I was like, oh wow, I'm really like kind of going out there and the, and this, this kind of, this ball is starting to gain some momentum. Yeah, awesome. Can you can you run us through what you've got that is peak design and um, and maybe how it's helped you in, on your journey? Yeah. So I mean, like one I mean one thing that's really important for me is that like when I'm an old man, I could look back on on this time. Yes. Like memory's fickle. One day my memory's going to go. I won't remember it. So recording the journey in just like pictures and videos is really important to me. Uh, so like. You know, like this this bag here um, is like the three years bag. I, I use that as a bum bag. Yeah, sometimes I just keep like my powders on it for kind of like quick access. Then um, one of the one of the best ones is the 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 fine map. Mm. Like it's, especially in like in cities, um, it's more convenient and I like, just feel like way way more safer. Yeah, when you can just like you don't have to keep taking the phone out and, and checking it. Um, and one of the ones that is really fun to use is the little tripod. I keep it on the back just up here. And I use it like I, t I took off the legs. Use like the the adapter kit to make it like just. just oh, so you just put feet on the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Lighten it up. Yeah. And then it means I can just like take it out, like sit down, yeah. press record. Yeah, yeah. all shot and kind of carry on. But that's really fun because that's made making videos really. And I never really had the confidence or willpower to try and balance a camera and like get like a rock or something under yeah. it, set it up. But this, yeah, makes it. You just want to set, forget. Yeah hit record yeah exactly peak designs mission um is about uh well apart from making amazing products that that help people to create and inspire they have a mission to use their voice and creators voices to improve um the world and to in inspire positive change i would love it if you could tell us um why you were doing this trip and um what cause you're trying to create positive change for as well? Well, I left. I decided to raise money for a mental health charity back home because, you know, for, for many years, I very much tried to take myself out of the world as like, as much as I could. Like in living in this, it was kind of a big, like, you know, let me, yeah. let me get out there. I don't have like- A big fuck you. A big fuck you to that. Like, let me get like, let me get out in the world and yeah. like, dive into the world like as much as I can. So I thought if something objective can come out of this for, for other people, mm. then that will motivate me to kind of like continue the journey. Um, so what is that cause? So that's MIND. Yeah. MIND. Yeah, they um, kind of lobby government for, you know, positive change for things protecting people, you know, with mental health problems, be treated kind of with respect. Yeah, um, right. So yeah, they're, they're doing good things back up. Okay, well, we'll, we'll put a link for that down below as well. So um, if you want to, contribute or get to know mind yeah um then you can you can search for that down below so you don't have an end date at the moment no you know originally i thought it was going to be eight months okay. yeah i planned to be away yeah you missed it yeah <laughs> i was somewhere in malaysia um at eight months and i think okay. yeah i'm not not going home and how long are you in australia uh so i've, I've been there quite a long time actually um well, it takes a while to ride across the street. Yeah, so I mean, it's I, a I, big place. Yeah, I started in Perth, uh, went across, 
lives in this little town called Wirala in yep. South Australia on the on the Nullarbor or on the air highway. Yeah, favorite town. Yeah. yeah, yeah, real good. Met met a great sheep farmer there who took quad biking. Awesome. Took me shooting. Took me fishing. All the all the fun stuff. And um, um, cycled up to Alice Springs, Uluru, Katajuta, back down, and then to Melbourne. And next I'll be going to Sydney. So I'll leave. I'm gonna leave Melbourne next Sunday. Okay. Um, and yeah, push on through the high country. Cool. And then what's next? Uh, I'm gonna head over to. Indonesia to do a race with my friend. Um, following that, I'll go to New Zealand and ride. Yeah, right there, south it off. Because I'm, I'm trying to put, yeah, I'm trying to push that in yeah, yeah, for springtime. So yeah, the plans to arrive there around September. Oh, yeah. Winter in Japan was enough for me. I don't need use there. I don't need winter in New Zealand. No, yeah, <laughs> absolutely not. Okay, well, thank you very much, sir. Yeah, cheers. We will, uh, we'll see you on the road. Hopefully, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, his details will be down below if you want to follow. Uh, we'll see you soon.